Hello friends, I'm Amanda Rose Athenor. I'd like to share a little of my life with you as a busy multimedia producer and eclectic occultist. In this video, I'm going to show you how I celebrated Imolk, the neo-pagan holiday that falls between Yule and Ostara. As it's a holiday for thinking about new life and looking for signs of spring, I'm going to plant some seeds. I'm also going to be tending to a plant that really needs some TLC. At the end, I'll even share with you some of my personal mythology to explain what Imolk means to me. Let's light some incense and get started with our day. Before planting any new seeds, I had to tend to the plants that I already have. And I realized a few days ago that a couple of my plants had been infested with spider mites. These are common pests and they tend to crop up when conditions are rather dry, which they are in this house during the winter, unfortunately. I feel so bad for my ivy. He was tucked behind several other plants and I didn't realize how bad the problem was until many of his leaves had already been damaged. I have been spraying him with a solution of isopropyl alcohol and it seems to be working. I haven't noticed any new mite activity. Rubbing alcohol does seem a little harsh though, so if you know of any gentler solutions for getting rid of pests on houseplants, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Today, I'm simply going to wash the plant down in the sink to try to get rid of any bugs that might be left on the leaves. And then I'm going to get rid of webs and any remaining bugs with one of these little cotton wipes. Most of what you see me doing in this video did not take place on Imolk, as I've been very busy lately, and the holiday falls in the middle of the week this year. I decided to do all of my Imolk activities the weekend before the actual holiday, and I'll be honest, it's been a little bit difficult to think about spring when it's been so cold and snowy still where I live. I guess that's what Imolk is about. It's not really about being able to see, spring happening yet. It's about finding that light inside and having faith that your seeds are going to grow. If I'm being honest, I've been doing a lot of worrying about the future lately. I can't really explain why. The world just seems like an overwhelming place at times. Taking some time to think about cycles and the return of the sun is kind of what I needed right now. Thankfully, this little guy has a lot of healthy leaves left, and even though he looks so sick and I feel so bad, I think he'll be okay. After tending to my sick ivy, I'm going to transplant a couple of the flowers that I got as a birthday gift this year. They've been stuck in this little basket for a while, and I think it's time for them to have their own pots to breathe in. Usually, I would take care of this outside, but it is about 20 degrees right now, and that wouldn't be fun for anyone. So I have this big bag of potting soil uh, hidden behind my counter where you can't see it, and it's kind of a mess down there, and it's a little embarrassing, but that's okay. I'll admit, as much as I love nature and the earth, I have such a hard time getting my hands dirty. I feel like some people love gardening just because they want to get their hands dirty and I just can't do it. <laughs> I have to wear gloves all the time. So if you're a witchy or a pagan person that is a little bit germaphobic, dirtophobic, trust me, you're not alone. I still love my plants though. They bring me so much joy and I'm happy to get dirty for them. Seeing new sprouts is never not magical to me, no matter how much I know about science and biology. So I'm really looking forward to see which of these seeds is going to grow this year. I love microgreens because they're so easy to grow and they're so abundant. In the past, I've grown broccoli microgreens, but this year I'm choosing coriander because of its associations with love and harmony. I'm also going to plant rosemary, a classic witchy herb, of course lavender for tranquility, and a sunflower for the sun. Fun fact, lavender is one of the only common herbs that I've never been able to grow from seed, no matter how hard I try. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, it doesn't seem like it would be that difficult, but whenever I plant it, it simply doesn't grow. So I am really hoping that this year will be different and I will have a beautiful crop of lavender to harvest for the spring. I also have trouble growing sunflowers, but that's not because of me, that's because 
Uh, there are several herds of deer that live in my neighborhood and as soon as I move the plant outside to grow, they eat the sprouts right away. <laughs> and that very well may happen this year, but that's okay. I'm going to plant the seed anyway because I love sunflowers and because I'm a bit of an optimist at the end of the day. I have been growing plants from seed for as long as I can remember. It was my dad who first taught me how to grow things. And while I didn't tend much to plants when I was in college, I've come back to it now that I am an adult. Like I said, no matter how many times I've seen seeds sprout, I never fail to be impressed when I see those little green dots in the soil after a week or two. I think that really is one of the keys to finding happiness in this world. It's not looking for big, life-altering moments. It's really about finding those little things that bring you little bits of joy that take your mind off the big things. I personally have a hard time doing that. Taking care of plants gives me something to do and makes me feel important. <laughs> and they're just so cute. <laughs> I can't help it. Before putting the seeds into the soil, I hold them in my hand for a moment. I feel the earth underneath my feet and imagine the roots of all the trees in my yard beneath the house, around me, growing up into the sky above me. I imagine those roots coiling up around my legs, feeding energy through me and into the seeds in my hand. It's a simple ritual, but it gives me the chance to think about the hope I have for these new seeds. When I'm done, I'll set them on my windowsill and eagerly await new growth in the next couple weeks. I wanted to take a walk today, but again, I have a lot to do and it's very cold, so I didn't have a chance. Instead, I walked into the yard and I found a stick to use for a crafting project later. It's customary to make a St. Bridget's cross on Imolk. Usually these are made out of straw, which I'm fresh out of, so I'm going to break this stick apart and use it to make a God's Eye mandala. Keep in mind, Imolk is a Celtic holiday, and the God's Eye is a South American tradition. I'm not claiming to equate the two in any way, but I love making the God's Eye because it's just so beautiful how the strings cross each other and wrap around each other, and I think it's a beautiful way to honor the sun as we eagerly await its return. For the mandala, I chose two colors of yarn, red and this peachy color. They remind me of fire and life and blood and just all of these wonderful, beautiful things that we're going to see return in the summer when it gets warm again. And when I'm done, I'm going to set it on my altar. And uh, I found this tea somewhere in my room. I don't know if it's any good anymore, but I think it's really pretty. Um, I'm gonna sprinkle it all over the mandala as a symbol of new life and add some of my dried flowers, which simultaneously stand for life and death. Um, and I will leave it there. Imolk is a special holiday to me, but I never expected it to be. When I was first learning about the holiday several years ago, I found out that Breed, the Celtic goddess who Imbolc is associated with, is not only a goddess of life and nature, but also a goddess of the forge, of fire. In my personal mythology, I relate very strongly to fire and life and fire as a creative force. And so an entire holiday celebrating life being reborn through a feminine fiery force resonated so strongly with me. You may also know that Freemasonry has been a big influence on my practice over the years. It was around this time a few years ago that I discovered that Charles Gounod, the same composer that wrote Faust, an opera that's pretty sacred to me, actually composed an opera semi-based on the central Masonic legend about the building of the Temple of Solomon. The opera is called The Queen of Sheba, it's rather obscure, it's melodramatic, it's over the top, and is more about the builder of the Temple of Solomon, Adoniram, having an affair with the Queen of Sheba than it is about Masonic symbolism. But I'm a chaos witch at heart, and I love finding sacredness in all sorts of things, including opera. 
My favorite scene from *The Queen of Sheba* comes from Act Two, in which Adoniram attempts to cast the molten sea, a gigantic basin in the temple, to hold water for ritual baths, using a giant blast furnace. The central melody of the scene is an invocation in which Adoniram and the workers call upon the spirits of fire to assist them and protect them in their endeavor. When I first heard this, it blew my mind. The forge, the blast furnace, these are things that I relate to myself in my own personal mythology. In a dream once, it was revealed to me that this archetype is called the womb of fire. And to hear this beautiful hymn to the spirits of fire in the midst of an opera that I'd never heard of before, it was an enthralling experience. If you know anything about the story, you know that the whole situation didn't go so well. Even so, this piece of music has become a tradition for me to listen to every year around this time. It sounds like the sun rising to me, and the power in creation through fire. I should also mention that when I discovered this opera, I didn't really realize it was Imolk. I wasn't religiously following the Wheel of the Year back then. Ever since then, I've always made a point to do something for Imolk, even if it's just putting some music on, lighting up my altar, or taking some time to plant a seed or two. It tends to be a dreary time of year where I live. I don't suffer so much from seasonal depression, but I do tend to feel a little down and I can get stuck in my own head. I think everyone should pause this time of year and think about the fact that stagnation is not permanent. No matter how slow or sad or cold things seem, they will change. That's the lesson of fire, is transformation. And while I'm waiting eagerly to see if the groundhog sees his shadow because I don't want there to be six more weeks of winter, I also know that even if that winter comes, even if it's bitterly cold, I will have these beautiful seeds that I can harvest from and use all year round. And it's my sincere hope that everyone who sees this video feels inspired to keep these thoughts alive as we eagerly await the return of the sun. Hail unto her from the abodes of night. And that's it friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like so I know to make more. And just remember that each and every one of you is a star, and I'm so thankful to have you in my orbit.